Hi. I'm so glad you could join me again. I have another story for you. Today I was thinking, I went to the grocery store and there were quite a few things that I normally buy that I wasn't able to buy. And I wondered if that's happening at your house too. Maybe your fo favorite food isn't available today, um, or maybe your mom doesn't have time to cook it today, or you're grown up. So I was thinking about food, and I have a great story about that, and it's called the seven silly eaters. So I want you to listen, and while I'm while I'm reading, um, if you hear something unusual about the text, about the words, just shout that out. I'm going to be listening for someone to notice what I've noticed about this book. That's the first thing, and then the second thing we're going to be talking about food in this book. So when you hear a food mentioned, a new food mentioned. Think to yourself, is that a healthy food? Is that a good, healthy choice? Or is that a not so good choice? So those are the two things I want you to be listening for as we read The Seven Silly Eaters. And that's by Mary Ann Hoberman. And it's illustrated by Marla Frazee. Now remember, the author is the person that puts the words in the book. And the illustrator is the person who puts the pictures in the book. So these two people, Marla and Marianne, have worked together so that we can have this book, The Seven Silly Eaters. All right, here we go. Not so long ago, they say, a mother lived just like today. Mrs. Peters was her name. Her little boy was named the same. Now Peter was a perfect son in every way except for one. When Peter was just one year old, he did not like his milk served cold. He did not like his milk served hot. He liked it warm, and he would not drink it if he was not sure it was the proper temperature. But Mrs. Peters did not mind. She was a mother, sweet and kind. And when his milk spilled on the floor, she patiently prepared some more. She'd take the bottle from the shelf and chuckle softly to herself, oh, what a silly sort of eater is my darling baby Peter. I heard someone say it. Did you notice that these are rhyming words? I noticed that too, good job. <clears throat> Here we go. When Peter had not yet turned two, another baby, sweet and new, was born. Dear Lucy, small and fair with big blue eyes and curly hair. But long before this child was grown, she had opinions of her own. Of what should eat and what should not. She hated milk, both cold and hot, and warm was worst of all. Instead, whenever Lucy Deer was fed, she bellowed for pink lemonade, not from a can. Oh no, homemade. So far we've seen two foods, milk and lemonade. What do you think? What's the healthier choice? But Mrs. Peters did not mind. She squeezed each lemon to its rind while mopping milk up from the floor and patiently preparing more. She'd take the lemons from the shelf and giggle softly to herself. Oh, what a silly pair of eaters are Lucy Deer and Peter Peters. Now Lucy grew and Peter grew till he was three and she was two. And who was who? Why little Jack with eyes so brown and hair so black, a happy baby never cross, but all he'd eat was applesauce. Peeling apples by the pound, Mrs. Peters faintly frowned. She'd take the apples from the shelf and murmur weakly to herself. Mm, what a silly bunch of eaters are Lucy Jack and Peter Peters. Peter, Lucy, and young Jack had another brother, Mac. Mac was charming, round, and plump, but if his oatmeal had a lump, Max would dump it on the cat. Mrs. Peters hated that. But since she loved her children four, she'd strain the oatmeal two times more. She'd take it from the pantry shelf and mumble sadly to herself, oh, what a foolish group of eaters are all my precious little Peters. Before another year was through, who came along? Why, Mary Lou. She was a darling, sweet and bright, and had a healthy appetite. That is, as long as she was fed, soft and squishy homemade bread. Poor Mrs. Peters got no rest, but 
still she did her very best. She'd take the flower from the shelf and mutter feebly to herself, what a fussy bunch of eaters are all my lovely little Peters. A year rolled by, the children grew. They really are a splendid crew, sighed Mrs. Peters, pinning pins and diapering her brand new twins. Little sisters, quick and smart, impossible to tell apart, but slow like poached eggs, Fran like fried. If she mixed them up, they cried. Tired to the very bone, Mrs. Peters groaned a groan. she take the eggs down from the shelf and whisper weakly to herself, what persnickety young eaters are all my seven little Peters. Now time went by, as time will do, and as it passed, the children grew. Their problem was that as they grew, their appetites kept growing too, but not their choice of what to eat. Each child continued to repeat. They wanted what they'd had before. The trouble was they wanted more. Creamy oatmeal, pots of it, homemade bread and lots of it. Peeling apples by the peck, Mrs. Peters was a wreck. She wiped her brow and heaved a sigh. <sighs> Another year was passing by. In fact, she realized with sorrow, her birthday would arrive tomorrow. Drearily, she shook her head and wearily went up to bed. She thought the children had forgot her special day, but they had not. At crack of dawn, they all began to carry out their secret plan. Mrs. Peters would be fed a birthday breakfast in her bed, a breakfast made of all the foods that kept them in such happy moods. So while their weary mother slept, down the stairs the children crept, and from the cupboards and the shelves, happily they helped themselves. Carefully, they chopped and stirred, preparing what they each preferred. But despite the pains they took, since nobody knew how to cook, to measure things or make them hot, the more they tried, the worse it got. First, Mac's oatmeal turned out lumpy, which made poor Mac turn grim and grumpy. In fact, the lump got him so cross, he dumped them in Jack's applesauce. This bothered Jack so much, he threw it in the dough of Mary Lou, who tossed that mishmash that that made straight into Lucy's lemonade. And that put her in such a huff, she poured the icky sticky stuff into the double frying pan that held the eggs of Flo and Fran, who flung the hodgepodge on the spot into the milk in Peter's pot. Oh my goodness. And when they saw what they had done, they wished they never had begun. They'd hardly slept a wink last night, and still things hadn't turned out right. And even though they'd tried their best, it hadn't worked. They were depressed. They'd be in trouble too, unless they found some place to hide this mess. The oven seemed the perfect spot. They all forgot it still was hot. They stuck the pot inside, and then they all went back to bed again. The clock struck six, but on they slept. Meanwhile, their mother softly stepped down to the kitchen, smelled a smell. <laughs> what could it be? She could not tell. It smelled so good, she sniffed some more and opened up the oven door. She woke the children with her cries. They all came running in surprise, and in the, in the kitchen, what they found was Mrs. Peters dancing round. And in the oven, no mistake, a pink and plump and perfect cake. And as their mother danced with glee, she cried, a birthday cake for me? A birthday cake still piping hot? To think, I thought that you forgot. Now tell me please, how did you make this pink and plump and perfect cake so high and light and smooth as silk? It's smooth as, as silk from all my milk, said Peter. Lucy said, it's pink from all my lemonade, I think. And from my apples, added Jack. My oatmeal made it soft, said Mac. My bread dough too, said Mary Lou, said Fran and Flo. So as for its size, 
it was our eggs that made it rise. Then everybody sniffed some more and danced around the kitchen floor. They put the cake upon a dish and lit the candles. Make a wish, the children cried before you blow, and Mrs. Peters did just so. And what is more, her wish came true, as birthday wishes sometimes do. And from that day to this tis said, the Peters family all is fed. A simple single meal, just one, a meal that's good for everyone, made from the secret recipe. They all take turns in mixing it. They all take turns in fixing it. It's thick to beat and quick to bake. It's fine to eat and fun to make. It's Mrs. Peter's birthday cake. The end. So those seven, seven silly eaters, that's hard to say fast, all ended up liking the same birthday cake. Well, lucky for Mrs. Peters, because it must have gotten awfully tiring, as we saw, to keep making all those different foods. So I hope whatever you're having for dinner today, you enjoy. I hope you're remembering to think about healthy snacks and staying healthy. And I will see you soon. Bye.